everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. If you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials, so if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, before we get started, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette. I have it linked in the description below. It's totally free to download. Just open up the file that downloads and it'll automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. So take a second to go and grab that and then come back and we'll get started. Okay, first things first, we'll go over the canvas dimensions. They are 10 inches by 10 inches at 300 dpi. The color profile that we're using is the second one on the RGB list. And for our layers today, by the end of the video, we've used about 20 layers. So make sure you have that many available here. If you do not, you can always lower your DPI here to get more layers. This is our color palette here that you should have downloaded. Lots of just variations of different colors that we're going to be using in the drawing today. But that being said, let's go ahead and just jump right into it. The first thing that we're going to do is draw the three penguins starting with our middle guy and our middle penguin is going to use symmetry the other two will not use symmetry but the first one will so we will start with him and so we need to turn on symmetry so that's up here click the gear icon turn on the drawing guide click edit drawing guide and then choose symmetry here and you should see a vertical line there are other options here, so if you don't see a vertical line, you might need to go into here and click vertical and then make sure you can see it by selecting a color at the top and then click done. Now open your layers menu. We should be on layer one and it should now say assisted on it. If it does not click on it and turn on drawing assist. And then we are just going to go ahead and select this first color on the first row. And the brush that we're going to start with is the monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. Let's set it to about 40%. So with this first color, we are going to draw his belly. So we are going to do that by using some smart shapes where we will hold our pen down and Procreate will help our line snap into a perfectly smooth line. So we're going to start about halfway down the page, maybe a little bit above halfway and start on the center line here. And then I'm just going to draw out and down to the right like this, hold it down, click edit shape at the top, and then we can smooth it out a little bit. I want this middle section where the two sides meet to be perfectly smooth where one line goes right into the other rather than like before it started kind of like this with like a dip in the middle. Click our pen tool again and then starting over here I am going to make another line about like this. Again coming towards the middle. Go ahead and click edit shape if you need to and you can make some adjustments here as well. But I kind of like this shape here. I will now add some more lines to kind of straighten everything out so that our shape is nice and smooth all the way around. But let's start with that. So it's kind of like almost like a triangular shape with like rounded edges. Let's go ahead and fill that in. And then I will just zoom in here a little bit and yeah, we'll just kind of use our pen tool to kind of smooth out some of these other areas. Smooth it out across the bottom nicely. And even at the top, there's still a little bit of a dip here. So I am just going to make that a little bit better. So take your time and go ahead and do that. And then we will move on. So next we'll add a new layer, drag it below our belly layer. Click on the layer, turn on drawing assist so that we can use symmetry. Go to our color palette and find this first color in the second row. And the first thing that we're going to do is draw the head and we're just going to use like an oval shape, circular shape to start. 
So, you know, a little ways above the top of our belly here. Let's go ahead and draw a circular shape. Hold it down. Click edit shape. Obviously with symmetry turned on, it's gonna kind of create two circles. So let's just kind of bring them a little bit closer together. They don't have to be perfect, but something about like that. So it goes quite a ways up above my belly, but the bottom part ended up kind of behind my belly as well. And that's totally fine. We just wanted a good circular shape to start with. Go ahead and fill that in. On this top right corner of the circle here, we are going to start there draw a nice curved line going down hold it down we want it to go about two-thirds down our belly not all the way down about right there and then it kind of curves in here which is where we're gonna end up putting our fin so let's just start there and we'll make another kind of curved line like this hold that down as well but so at the end of your line here you just want a nice little curve going back to make kind of our little flipper shape. And then we are just gonna draw a line around the belly here to kind of connect the end of our flipper shape to our circle so that we can fill that in. And again, now we'll just kind of smooth things out a little bit if necessary. Maybe at the top of my head here, it wasn't quite perfect when it went into that other line. Something kind of like that. Add another new layer, drag it above both of our layers, click on it, turn on drawing assist, and we are going to grab this fifth color on the top row, and we are going to make our beak and our feet. So starting with the foot, we will start on the right side here of our symmetry line, you know, close to the corner of our belly here. And I'm just gonna start inside on my belly area. And we're just going to draw a curved line out like this. Hold that down. Then another like almost straight line kind of back in like this. And then we'll just kind of make like a little pointy line. And then a line back out. And then another curved line back into the top. About like that. And then let's fill that in. Make some adjustments again if necessary. Maybe I'll make this one a little bigger. But that will be about what our feet look like. And then we will move on to our beak. So same brush, same color, and same layer. And we will move up to the face area and right about in the middle. I'm just going to start out from the center line just a little bit, draw a line going straight across, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfectly horizontal line and it'll meet in the middle there, let it go. And then starting on the corner here, draw a line going down in towards the middle and then hold that down till it turns into a nice straight line, you know, a pretty shallow triangle here and then let that go and fill it in. So we should have a little beak just about like that. We're gonna to go to the layer menu, add another new layer, click on this layer, turn on drawing assist again. And lastly, we will make the eyes. So grab this first color on the third row, same brush, and we will zoom back in a little and starting up into the right of our beak here, out pretty far so that the eyes are pretty far apart. We will draw a nice little circular shape, hold that down and then fill it in something just about like that. And that will be our eyes. Okay, then we will go to our layer menu, select all four of these layers by sliding right on all of them, and then click group. And then you can click this little arrow here to minimize the group layers so that we don't see them all stacked on top of each other. At this point too, make sure that your penguin is about a good size. I might make him a little bit smaller so with the group selected, click the arrow tool, set it to uniform, make sure snapping is turned on in the bottom left. And I'm just gonna make him a little bit smaller and then drag him back to the center. When I see that vertical yellow line, that means he's perfectly in the center of the screen. Might move him down just a little bit, but we want enough room for our circle on the outside here and for our little ice slice of ice underneath our penguins. So 
about this kind of size and placement, and then we will base our other penguins off of him. Okay, let's go ahead and start on our next penguin. Let's add a new layer, drag it below our original penguin group. Grab the fifth color on the second row, same brush. We will not have symmetry turned on, and I am just going to zoom in here and we will start on this right penguin guy. So up and to the right, this one's gonna be a little bit taller. So up and to the right from our original penguin's head, I'm just going to draw a nice circular shape, hold it down. Click edit shape if you need to. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Move it a little bit closer. About like this. Go ahead and fill that in. Same brush and then on the very left of the circle here, I'm just going to start there and just draw a nice line down with a little bit of curve to it. And then on the right side of the circle here, the bottom right kind of corner, I'll start about there and I'll make another curved line about like this. Smooth that out a little if necessary. And then we will draw behind our little penguin guy here to connect the shape and then fill in that other area here. So that's it for his like blue part. Now we'll make his tummy. So let's add another new layer, drag it below this layer we just created and switch back to our first color on the top row. And then we are just going to start. So this is his head, he's looking this way. We will start right here, which is kind of like his chin area. Start right on this side of the circle and we will just draw a little squiggly line just like this. So it starts here, goes out, and then it goes back in and swoops down a little bit. We do want his bottom, the bottom of his belly to be pretty close to where this guy's is. So I'll just start here and kind of make it a little bit lower. Smooth everything out. And then again, I will follow this line here and then go behind my other penguin here and connect all of my other lines so that we can fill that in fill in this section too if you have any other sections and then again just kind of smooth it out if you need to i might even use my eraser tool here and kind of smooth out my original shape so that it looks about like this next add another new layer drag it below both of our layers grab the fifth color on the top row same brush and we are now going to draw his foot in his beak so let's start with the foot at the bottom he's only going to have one foot since we can only see the side of him so towards the bottom here but maybe a little bit up on this curved area i will start and i will just draw a curved line for the bottom of the foot hold that down and then maybe this toe another toe above that hold it down and then maybe one more small toe that you can see at the top with a curved line going back, kind of like that. And then again, connect it and fill it in. Make some adjustments if you want to, but I think that looks pretty good. Just a little bit big. So I'm going to use the arrow tool and just make it a teeny bit smaller. That looks pretty good. Then I will go draw his beak. So same brush, same layer, same color. And he is going to be looking up to the sky, a little bit up and to the right. So his beak's going to be about here on this top right corner of his head. And I'm just going to first draw a very, very slightly curved line like this. Hold that down. And then starting at that point, draw a bigger curved line back like this. Hold that down as well until it snaps and then connect to the shape so that we can fill it in. And then lastly, let's add another new layer above all of our layers for this new penguin here and grab the first color on the last row to draw our eyeball. And the eyeball will be right just inside the head, kind of towards the top of our beak here. And it is going to face a different direction. It's going to kind of look like it's facing, you know, up and to the right. And then we'll fill that in. So from the main perspective, it should look like this. Okay, so now go back to our layer menu and select all four of these layers and group them together. Minimize that group. 
add a new layer. It can be between our two groups, like it popped up. That's totally fine. We will start there. So let's again grab the fifth color on the second row, same brush, and we'll go over and do this guy on the left. So he's going to be a little bit shorter than our second guy, but taller than our middle guy, a little bit fatter. But we'll again start with his head. So let's start up into the left of this guy just a little bit, make a pretty big circle. Hold that down. Look at it shape if you need to. I'll make a little bit of adjustments, make it a little bit more circular. You know, we'll go a little bit behind our penguin here with his head and then the rest of it will stick out, but pretty big circle, fill that in. And then from here, we will go on the very, very left side of the circle here. Start there, draw out a little bit in kind of a curved motion like this. And then from that point, we will draw in and back in a, and then down in a curved motion, kind of like this. Starting from there, we will draw curved in behind our penguin here and then out at the bottom of our penguin. It'll curve back out. And then from that point at the very bottom of the belly, it'll curve back in, kind of like a rounded little part of his bottom there that we can see his blue color poking out, which we didn't do before, but we will do it on this guy. Let's go ahead and connect that little shape at the bottom, that little triangular shape and fill that in. And then same thing, we'll connect here and fill that in. So you should have a shape kind of like this. Again, make some adjustments if you need to. This original curved line was kind of wonky. So about like that. Add a new layer, drag this layer below our blue layer, grab the first color on the first row again, and then for his belly, this time it will be very simple. We will start right under this little lip of his face here, and we'll strike curved line out and then back in to meet at the bottom of this, the bottom blue part. Hold it down and then, you know, click edit shape if you need to, to adjust where it starts and ends or adjust the curve, but I like how mine turned out. And then we will connect it behind our penguin here, go all the way around so that there's no gaps and then fill it in. Then let's add a new layer, drag it below our belly layer, grab the fifth color in the top row and the same thing, we will make a foot and the beak. So let's start with the foot, same thing that we did before. It'll be sideways like this, just the one foot, but it'll face the other direction. So at the very bottom of our belly here, kind of up on the curve though a little bit, not right at the very bottom. We'll draw a little line going out to start the base of our foot, line back in, pointy little toe, pointy line out, and another curved line back in, and then connect it and fill it in. Make some adjustments if you need to. Turn out pretty good, again, a little bit, just a little bit bigger than I would like. There we go. Then let's add the beak, and he's going to be looking up just a little bit, but not as much as our other guy here, so we'll just start a little bit ways up from the bottom of this blue area here. Draw a line going out and curving down just a little bit. And then a bigger line coming back. And then connect it and fill it in. So it should look about like that. And then lastly, we will add the eyeball. So add a new layer, drag it above our other layers for this penguin. Grab the first color on the last row. And again, it'll be inside a little bit from the beak, kind of towards the top of the beak. And this one will just be at a slight angle upwards, but not as much as our second guy. I'm gonna click edit shape here, make it a little bit less skinny and tall, and then we'll fill that in. So about like that, his eye is a little big. I'm just gonna adjust it. There we go. Right about there. So this is what your picture should look like so far. Take your time getting all of your shapes nice and smooth and how you like them. Hold down when you can to have Procreate help you make these perfectly smooth lines. 
but I know it's not possible to always do that for every shape, but do it when you can and that's very, very helpful. Go back to our layer menu, select these four layers and put them in a group as well. This group here, this left penguin, I'm going to click the arrow on it, turn on uniform, and I'm just going to make him a little bit smaller. Just a little bit and then drag him back so that like when I first made him smaller you could see all this white here. You, If you like him where he is you can fill that back in with the blue on that blue layer. Otherwise I'm just going to drag him back over to kind of hide that. And then let's go and find our other let right side penguin. Click the arrow on his group and we'll just downsize him a little bit too. Okay so now we are going to go in and work on all of the shadows and highlights to give our penguins a bit of depth and make them look a little bit more 3D. So we are going to start with our front penguin here. So it, it's the top group on my layers. I'm just going to open up all the layers in this group. I'm going to start on this blue body layer. So I'm going to find this layer, click on it, turn on alpha lock, and I'm going to grab the second color on the second row. That's going to be my shadow color for this guy. So for the shadows and highlights, I'm going to switch my brush to the soft brush under the airbrushing category. It's just the soft brush, not the soft blend or the soft airbrush or anything. The soft brush. And I'm going to set it to about 7 to 8% somewhere in there. And this with this darker color, I'm just going to focus this on the edge of the penguin. The edge of his body here all the way around edge of his flippers and the edge on the inside as well. So I'm just going to do this pretty lightly to give it to make it blend nicely with my original color, not be too harsh of a difference. And with symmetry turned on, I only have to do it on the one side and then it copies it to the other side. Next on the same layer, I'm going to grab the third color on the second row, same brush, same size. And we are just going to focus this on the center area to add some more definition there as well. A little bit of a highlight in the middle. Find this layer again on the layer menu and turn off drawing assist. Next, I'm going to grab this fourth color on the second row and we are going to zoom in a little bit. Drop the size of the brush to two to 3%. And we are going to use this color and size now to add some, some real glossy looking highlights right in the middle where I just added this lighter color before. So you don't want to add this on the edge where the shadowy color is, but right in the middle kind of where it would be at its lightest. And I'm just going to very lightly add some little sections of this kind of following the direction of the body or the flippers or wherever you're drawing. So we'll add a few there and then on the right side, maybe one bigger one. And that's why we turned off symmetry because we don't want them to be the same on each side. We want to add a little bit of variation. So that is it for those highlights. And then while we're here, we are going to create the highlight and shadow around the eyeballs to really make them pop. So with this lighter color that we're using here, same size, maybe drop the size even a little bit more. And then I'm just going to go right around the edge of the eye following the shape of it to add a nice little highlight like that only on the bottom half. Same thing on this other one. Then let's grab the second color on the second row again and we will focus that on the top half and then bringing it into the middle where they meet, just kind of lightly dragging them together to kind of blend them right there. Okay. And that is it for the blue part. So now we'll do some similar stuff to the body and the flippers and the beak and whatnot, but let's go to the body next. So I'll find this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab the second color on the top row, drag my brush back up to seven to 8% and focus this on the very edge. 
Symmetry is still turned on right now, so it's going to mirror it on both sides, which just saves some time. But again, go pretty lightly to help it really blend into our original color. But then it can get a little darker right on the very edges. And then grab the third color on the top row and do the same thing in the middle area. And then we will go in back to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn off drawing assist now, grab the fourth color on the top row, and bring the size back down to 2 to 3% so we can add our glossy highlights. And again, I'm just going to kind of follow the shape of the original little shape that I'm on here. Something kind of like that for the belly. Then we'll go to this flipper and beak layer and we will again turn on alpha lock. And again, grab this six color on the top row now, the darker golden color. We can leave the size pretty low this time, maybe just three to four percent for our main shadows and highlights just because these shapes are a little smaller so, and we want to get kind of in the little crevices here and whatnot. So use the smaller brush size to kind of focus right on the edges of that and then zoom in and we will do the edges of the beak as well. Let's grab the last color on the top row here Drop the size even just a smidge. We'll just do the beak while we're up here and just focus this right in the middle. Again, it's kind of difficult with the brush size and the beak being so small, but that looks pretty good. And then we'll move down to the feet here and focus on the center of those, following the shape of the foot a little bit, like this. And then again, go back to our layer menu, turn off drawing assist for this layer. And we are going to grab the first color on the first row for our glossy highlight color. So drop the size even a little further than we just had it. You might need to make the brush even smaller than you had it before to really fit in nicely with our shape here. And then on the nose, we'll just do it maybe on this little right side towards the tip here. Just a little tiny blob of highlight. And lastly, while we are here, we will find our eyeball layer. Click on it, turn off drawing assist, grab the fourth color on the top row, and switch to our monoline brush really quick. Set that to about 20%. And we are just going to add a little dot in the top right corner of each eye. And that completes our little penguin there. So now we will move on to the other ones. While we have this brush and color selected, let's just open up each one and find their eyeball. So this is my left guy. Here's the black eyeball layer. And let's just go ahead and add their dot. So one in the top corner there find our other penguin eyeball layer and add a dot in the top corner of that one as well. That way that brush and stuff is out of our way and we can just focus on using our soft brush for all of our highlights and shadows now. Now we're just going to do the same thing essentially for the other two as well. We will use um, some slightly different colors for the blues here. We'll use these last four blues on the second row for them. The first one was the original body color so we'll use the darker one the lighter one and then the lightest one for the glossy highlight but then we'll use the same ones for the belly and the beak so while i'm on this right guy let's go ahead and do him so there's no drawing assist to turn off ever since he is facing sideways and we never used symmetry on him so let's just go ahead and find our blue layer click on it turn on alpha lock grab the six color on the second row switch back to our soft brush and move it back up to about seven or eight percent so that we can do our outline highlight. So we'll just focus this darker color all around their edge, including right here behind our other penguin. 
and let's grab the next one seventh color on the second row focus that all towards the middle adding a nice highlight there just kind of blending it all together and then let's grab this eighth color on the second row drop our brush size down to two to three percent add our little glossy highlights very lightly here following the shape of his head kind of rounded at the bottom here like this and then while we're on this brush and this we can even drop the size a little bit more we'll do the same eyeball outline so we'll use this lighter color on the bottom half so i'm turned sideways here a little bit so this is technically the bottom half of his eye we'll go around that and then let's grab the darker color the sixth one on the second row that we used for the outline shadow and we'll do that around the top half again just kind of blending them together in the middle lightly okay so that's it for the blue part of his body so now we'll move on to the belly let's find that layer turn on alpha lock grab the second color on the top row and brush back up to seven to eight percent and we'll go around the edges with this and then grab the third color on the top row focus on the middle And lastly, the fourth color on the top row, drop back down to two to three percent. And we'll add a little bit of this. Right in the front here would be probably where the highlight would hit. And then we will do the same thing for the beak and the foot. So find that layer, turn on alpha lock. Grab the sixth color on the top row, brush back up, maybe just a little bit to like four to five percent since we're working on the smaller shapes again. Let's go ahead and start up here at the beak and add the shadow around that. Then we'll move down to the foot, add the shadow around that. Grab the seventh color on the top row, lower it even a little bit more to really get in here. and in here and then the first color on the first row and lower it even more and we'll add just a little bit right on the tip here and then on the foot as well something like that and now you can really see how much better this looks than our other guy on the left here since he's not done yet it really, really adds just so much like definition and texture to our penguins here to really make them look alive. So that being said, we'll move on to him. We'll expand his layers out so that we can work on his next. So let's find his blue layer, turn on alpha lock, switch back to our sixth color on the second row here, the darkest blue, same soft brush and back up to seven to 8% to do the edges. And this little bottom triangle here that you have, I'm just going to focus all around the edges of that as well. We probably won't add a highlight down here because there just probably wouldn't be one. So let's just switch to the seventh color on the second row and we'll just add that just to his main part of his head up here. All in the center. I know I probably don't have to keep saying this, but I will anyway <laughs> as we keep going. And then the eighth color on the second row, drop the size back down to two to three percent. We'll just add a little bit of highlight for him up here. That looks pretty good. And then same color, we'll maybe drop the brush down just a little bit more. And now we will do the eye thing, the outline. So bottom half, we will use this lighter color that we have. 
and then switch back to our darkest color, the sixth one on the second row, for the top half, and then blend them together in the middle a little. Next up, the belly. Find that layer, turn on alpha lock, grab the second color in the top row, brush back up to 7 to 8%, and we'll do the edges again. And then the third color on the top row to do the middle. And the fourth color on the top row, size back down to 2 to 3%. And again, probably on this side will be the highlights for him. And then lastly, the beak and the foot. Find that layer, turn on alpha lock. Grab the sixth color on the top row. Bring the size up to just maybe four or five percent for this part. And we will just focus on the edges here. And then the seventh color on the top row to focus on the middles. And lastly, the first color on the first row. Drop the size to maybe two to three percent or a little bit smaller if necessary to make a little highlight here. And on the foot. And so that is it for our penguins. They are now complete. So we'll go back to our layer menu and just minimize this group. Again, move your penguins around if you need to, but now we are going to move on to the little chunk of ice underneath them that they're standing on. So let's go ahead and add a new layer, drag it below all of our layers right above our background layer. Grab the second color on the last row, and we are gonna switch back to our monoline brush. Set the size to whatever you like, maybe like 40 to 50%. And we are just going to make a wavy kind of oval shape underneath them. So I'm just going to start here and we won't be able to see the back side of it. I'm just going to start over here, come off, make it a little bit wavy like this. And then in the back and then it'll connect something kind of like this. Go ahead and fill it in, make sure it's connected. I might use the arrow tool and just tilt it a little so it's a little bit more even looking all the way around. Tilt it, move it. You can even um, use this warp tool if you need to to kind of distort it a little bit. To kind of get your curves to line up how you'd like them. So I'm just going to do something like that. But you for sure want it to be underneath all of your penguins feet and then go behind them you know, in the middle of their belly there like that. I am going to go to my layer menu, select this layer and all three of my groups, click the arrow tool, turn it to uniform, and I'm just gonna move them all up just a little bit to make a little bit more room for this next part of our ice chunk here. So go ahead and just move them up a little if you need to, if you need more room underneath. But now we are going to go back to our layer menu, find this ice layer that we made, make a duplicate of it. The bottom one, grab it, grab the third color on the last row, and drag and drop it. You won't be able to see it yet because it's behind this one, but click the arrow tool. Make sure snapping and magnetics are both turned on, and we are just going to drag it down a little bit like this. So this is why I needed just a little bit more room. So if you need to move your penguins around, go ahead and do so. But we want about this much room probably between them. Then with our monoline brush still active in this darker blue color, we are going to start on each side here. And on the furthest out point here, I am going to draw a line straight up, hold it down, and then go ahead and click edit shape. So hold it down until it turns perfectly straight and then click edit shape at the top so that you can adjust it. 
so that it connects the two pieces of ice together like that. Do the same thing on this side. Hold it down. We don't want it peeking out anywhere, so just edit your shape so that it's not peeking out either up here or down here. And then fill it in if there's a little gap so that it's all complete. Like this. Now we're going to add a little bit of texture and definition to these shapes. So first we're on this bottom darker one. Let's go ahead and just stay there. Click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, and then we're going to grab our second color on this last row, the one that we used for our first little slice of ice. And we're going to switch back to our soft brush. So let's have that about eight to 10 percent. And I'm just going to make some little vertical lines in these high points of my ice here. So where it swoops in, we're going to do darker. And then where it swoops back out here, we're going to do lighter. So on the edges here and these little outward points. Go to our color palette again and select the fourth color on the last row. And that is what we will use in these deeper points here where it swoops in like that and lastly grab this fifth color on the last row and drop the brush size maybe a little bit to like six or seven percent and just focus that right on the very tip of these edges that we highlighted a second ago just to add a little bit more definition there while we have this color selected we are going to go back to our first lighter slice of ice here on top. Click on that layer, turn on alpha lock, and we are going to grab the, the turpentine brush under the painting category. Set that to maybe 20 to 30, 25 to 30 percent, and we are just going to, in a diagonal motion, Add a little bit of this to the top of our ice in little sections, kind of. Not covering the entire thing, just adding some little sections to give it some texture here and there. Next, we need to add a little shadow underneath our penguins, but we are getting very close to being done. So let's add a new layer on top of our two ice layers. Click on it. Click on this end for this layer and drag it up to multiply. We are going to grab the last color on the last row. It's the sixth one in line. And we are going to switch back to our soft brush again at maybe eight to 10%. And we are just going to very lightly add this underneath our penguin's feet and body, not going all the way to the edge if you can help it if you have enough room, but just focusing right underneath them to add a little shadow there like that. And our very last step is to add the little circular outline in the background. So we are going to add a new layer, drag it below all of our layers. And we are going to grab the, the fifth color on the last row, switch back to our monoline brush again, and draw a circle. Hold it down. Touch your finger to the screen to make it a perfect circle. And then go ahead and click Edit Shape. And we just want it to be a little bit bigger than our penguins here, but leave it at that and then go ahead and fill it in. So I need everything to be just a little bit smaller so that I can um, add a little texture to the outside of the circle here. So let's go ahead and open up our layers menu and I am just going to slide right on absolutely everything here. Click the arrow tool, set it to uniform. And then I'm just going to downsize everything just a little bit and then recenter it like that. So go ahead and resize things if you need to. And then I'm going to go back to my circle layer down here at the very bottom of my layer menu. And then I'm going to, with this fifth color on the bottom row still selected, I'm going to switch my brush to the grunge brush under the textures category. Set this to maybe 40% and I am just going to run this all around the edge of my circle here to give it some nice texture following the shape pretty closely so that I don't mess up the circular part of it. Oh, just did this all the way around. If 
if you liked the way it looked before this, you can just leave the circle as is, but I just liked it better like this, so I added that little detail. But do what makes you happy. That being said, that is the last step of our drawing today, and we are now done. So, I hope you had fun. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more tutorials from me in the future. If you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it, so go ahead and post it and then tag me so that I can check it out. While you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching!